Let's look at loading a CSV into a Spark data frame in Databricks. So the first thing I'm going to do is have a path to my CSV. And if you look at this path real quick, the way I got that is I just uploaded it into my workspace in a CSV folder. And then you can click on this and click copy, URL, or full path. I used full path. And then I come back here and I just pasted the full path right there. In front of it, I tacked on a file colon slash slash because by default in AWS Databricks, it tacks on an S3 path. So I'm replacing that default S3 path with just a regular file that I'm getting from my workspace. Then I'm taking that file and I'm using a spark.read.csv and there's the file one. Now, there are a whole bunch of options here and we're gonna cover those options one by one. So what you'll notice is I'm gonna read with the header is false, which means the first row is not a header. I'm gonna have it in first schema and the separator is gonna be a comma. It's a CSV, so comma separated value, right? So we'll use the comma there. And then I'm gonna display the record count so you can see that. And I'm gonna show you the schema and then I'll show you the data frame and that's it. So I hit, I'm on a Mac, so I hit command return. It runs and you can see I loaded in 526 records and everything's a string. Why is everything a string? Well, if I come down here, you can see that actually I do have a header row. And so in first schema is incorrectly reading this as um, a string everywhere. When really you can see that I have integers and strings and dates and uh, decimals, you know. Um, so if I come back here, I can say header is true. And I run that. And now I'm getting good data types. So instead of all strings, I'm getting integers, still 525 records. So it took that first record and made it a header. And now you can see that I have good header names, which is good. And I have good data types, except, I don't know if you noticed, but these date data types kind of got messed up. These dates have not occurred yet. And that's obviously, I can't have orders that haven't occurred yet. So um, why is that? Well, hold that question and I'll get back to it. Okay. Another thing that we can do, by the way, is instead of just reading one file, you notice that I had several files there, I can take the file name off and just end the path with the backslash, or excuse me, in this case, a forward slash. And I can hit command return and run it again. And now instead of 525, I get 828 and all the right data types. And then look, same bad dates though. Same bad date. So not only can you import just one file, but you can import a whole bunch of files all at the same time by just choosing the folder. As, you know, Of course, you want to make sure that the CSVs all have the same schema, the same format. Only the first one needs the header, and then the rest of them will just tack on after it. This is really good if you're getting like daily CSVs landing in a folder that you're, they have access to. And so every day you, you know, rebuild the table and the new CSV gets included automatically without you changing any of the code. So remember this bad date problem. Well, this is happening because of infer schema. It's not a great practice to use infer schema equals true here because you might get a bad data type. Like who, who knows if this is really an integer? Maybe it's something else. Or who knows if this is really a string? Maybe it's something else. In my case, though, it did correctly pick up the date, but there must be something wrong with the date. So if I'm trying to land a file, I want to create a permissive data type so that I can actually look at the data in the file so that I can manipulate it. So the way I do that is I'm going to actually create the schema manually. And you can see the code for doing that here. I create a variable called schema manual, struct type, and then I defined an array of struct fields here with the names of the fields and the data type. And in this case, I'm going to change the order date and required date and ship date to a string because I want to go ahead and look at the value. So I hit command return there and I run it. And what you'll find is once I use a more permissive data type, that it's only a two digit year. And now that I've got a two digit year, I can do something with that, right? I've got a data frame um, and that data frame can be manipulated. I can mess around with that and I can modify that year. And then I can go do something else with it. Like, you know, ideally convert this from a CSV to a parquet file, um, create more curated and focused data types that are specific, have specific use cases and purposes. Um, and that's it. That's the basics of dealing with a CSV and Databricks. Hopefully that helped you. Thanks.